this, this one is going to be much, much less technical than the previous one. Uh, we're actually a customer of, uh, of Blackmouth and of, of Stratus. Uh, so uh, obviously you are, you are familiar with the overall W2 positioning, the middleware integration platform that does cloud and social and API integration, big data analytics and everything. Uh, and the, the goal of that cloud project of the cloud team within WSO2 is to make sure that we, we provide any possible way for you to consume our technology, right? So WSO2 is producing that wonderful technology, that all integration platform. And historically, we've been providing that as Apache open source and uh, obviously the on-premise production support. So a year ago when I joined WSO2, uh, we formed the team, and the goal of our team was to add the, the lower two modalities, right? So for the customers who want WSO2 to host WSO2 products, give that option as well, right? So it's not, it's not a different product, not different, uh, not different technology. It's exactly the same technology. We are taking the same open source code. So, for example, from the Stratus team, and, uh, and then we, we can give it to customers in two additional ways. So basically the goal of our team is to expand, expand the, the scenarios supported by that same technology for, the, um, for you guys to, to consume. And um, so today I'll quickly talk about these two modalities and what the difference is and how our team works. Uh, and uh, I don't have much time, so I'll do it on a high level, but I'm very open to the, to the questions. I'll leave some time at the end. Uh, so let's start with the dedicated cloud, with the, with the managed cloud. Uh, so basically, that's, that's the closest form to kind of traditional on-premise deployment. So the only difference is that we are running that for you. We are monitoring the system, we are doing the backups, we are installing the patches and updates. So we take away all that operational work from, from customers. Uh, this... Uh, is dedicated per customer, so each, each customer, each company gets a separate deployment, uh, so it can be VPN to customer environment, and it can be any, any particular combination of WS2 products. So basically you get the flexibility of the whole platform. You can pick any WS2 technology, combine different ways, add your customization, everything. It's, it's basically you get the same power as if you were doing it yourself. And uh, it can be combined with any other WS2 services. So you can get that, and you can also get developer services, custom development, professional services from WS2. They all kind of work together. Uh, we offer formal SLA. It's financially guaranteed. Uh, we, we do the monitoring. So at the end of each month, you are getting monitoring reports from us. And if we don't meet the... Uh, the SLA, you're getting uh, credits uh, for, for us not, not meeting them. Uh, and uh, we actually launched that exactly a year ago at Doublestockon Europe uh, in Barcelona. Uh, and uh, it, was, uh, it was very successful. Uh, it's, uh, today, it's actually the, the fastest growing WSO2 uh, service and offering internally, uh, in both in Q1 and Q2. Uh, we are already ahead of uh, many traditional uh, services internally, so ahead of training and consulting and custom development. Uh, and uh, by now, like w within a year, we already have customers in all the major regions. So we have customers in, in Europe, including UK, uh, in, uh, in Americas and, and in Asia Pacific. Uh, there was a, either was a talk or is a talk today uh, from um, uh, WSO Telco, the uh, Asiata team, on how they use uh, managed cloud uh, to do their, their launch of uh, GSM uh, APIs, GSM services. So basically, Asiata Groom, the, the telecom group in, in Asia Pacific, uh, they needed to quickly, like they had extremely short timeline, uh, they wanted to launch uh, APIs for, uh, for carriers uh, to enable them to do things like mobile payments, mobile identity, things like that. So GSM standard includes these, but uh, they are hard to implement. So as the other group, they did the implementation and they wanted to launch that as a product for carriers. 
and uh, they managed to do that very quickly because they used managed cloud. Basically, we, we helped them to set this up and then get this running, and we maintained that deployment for them. Um, so basically, within weeks, they could get to market without having to do the training of their own stuff and so on. And, uh, and we have both public and, and commercial customers. So it's been very, very successful. Uh, how it works, you pick the region. Right now we, we standardized on uh, AWS. Uh, so basically we can run it in any data center as long as it's an Amazon data center. And uh, the, the reason we are doing that is that, I mean, A, Amazon is fairly widespread. Uh, they have location in Ireland, location in Frankfurt. Uh, they have locations in, in Asia Pacific and in US. Uh, so it's a big vendor with a lot of data centers, so there's still choice for customers to pick the data center or multiple data centers if they want uh, cross data center availability. Uh, and uh, also, the reason we just took Amazon for now is that we can standardize on the monitoring tools, on the scripting tools, deployment tools, and backup strategies and so on. So it basically helps us keep our costs down and, and make it more cost effective for customers. Uh, uh, account gets it up. Uh, we, uh, again, since this is for our paying customers, you're basically using the same Jira support account to communicate with that, uh, with that team. That's the same account we use to uh, let you know if something happens, uh, if there's whatever, uh, an attack on your, on your deployment uh, or something needs patching and, and we, uh, we're planning that uh, patch update or something. Uh, it can include, so initially we launched that a year ago just for production accounts, but since then we've, we've expanded to non-production as well, because again, some of the customers wanted us to not just run their production account, but also their developer staging, testing, uh, deployment. So we, we can now do that as well. And like I mentioned, includes monitoring, backups, updates, um, everything. I'll switch quickly to the other one, uh, the public shared cloud. So public shared cloud is, is basically, uh, it's again, same technology, but the difference is that it is a shared deployment, right? So basically, as, as you probably know, the whole WS2 platform has been multi-tenant for, for many years now, right? There are big customers like, like Boeing and others who are running it in multi-tenant mode for their own customers. So now we are running our platform multi-tenant on the web for our customers. So since it is a multi-tenant deployment, obviously there's much less flexibility compared to dedicated deployment, right? You, you basically, you are sharing the same deployment with other customers. So the, the price points are much lower. It's, it's way, way cheaper. Right? The, the prices start at just $100 a month. So the, the prices are very low. However, your, your capabilities to, uh, to tweak the things and change the things are also lower because you are sharing the deployment. So you're getting your own tenant within that multi-tenant deployment, and, and that's what you get, right? So whatever settings and changes can be done at the tenant level, you can do that. Uh, which, is, uh, which is fairly powerful. Uh, for example, basically in the uh, API management, for example, what you get within tenant is still what you would get with, with other vendors, with the vendors who just offer API management as a service, like, like APG and, and Freescale and others. So basically, you, you can still have your own custom, uh, custom API store for your subscribers uh, with, uh, with your custom teams and custom URL and everything. Uh, so it's, it's fairly, fairly powerful. However, compared to your own API manager deployment, uh, there's still less things that you can do. Like you cannot, right now, at the moment, you cannot say add your identity server and easily do different federations for your API store. Like right, right now, that, that's not built into the system. Basically, we, we have to, for the shared public, uh, cloud, we have to optimize for the mainstream scenarios. So it works out of the box, but it's mainstream scenarios. Oh, and uh, so the goal, the end goal, is to have the whole platform in there and have all these different clouds for IoT, for analytics, for everything. 
Uh, it will take us time to get there. Technology exists. Uh, however, we need to, again, we need to carefully think through these main, uh, main, uh, mainstream scenarios and, and integration points, and that, that's why we're adding them one at a time. So right now, two uh, clouds are available. Uh, one is uh, for application hosting and, uh, and development, App Cloud. So that, uh, uh, that is based on our App Factory product. And it's basically, so it, it's a platform as a service that runs on top of Stratus. Um, and the thing is that Stratus, uh, what you saw in the previous session from LACMAL, Stratus is providing that kind of classic pass that you can compare to Cloud Foundry and OpenShift and, and others that does application deployment, application hosting, application scaling. However, what we've seen is that a lot of our customers need more than that. They want to have the whole application lifecycle management so they can actually have their teams develop their applications and then move applications from development to testing to production and, and pass the application from one phase to the other phase and have policies enforced and have, uh, so for example, uh, they want to say, okay, so application can go from development to testing only when all unit tests passed. So that they want to have that enforcement of policies and they want to make sure that uh, the context is not lost. Like if, if the application need a, needs a database and, need, and is using some APIs and, and so on, when it goes from stage to stage, the corresponding resources need to be created and, and switched and so on. So in, in, the, in the classical PaaS systems, like Cloud Foundry and, and OpenShift, you just get what you get. So for example, say your application needs a database. Okay, you, you create a database and that's what it uses. However, if you happen to, have, to need different database in production and development, which you typically do, uh, classical PaaS systems, they don't do that, right? You, you go to Heroku and you get a database, but there's no switching of the database when it goes from from phase to phase, right? So that whole lifecycle management theme is missing from traditional passes. And that's, that's the reason for App Factory to exist, and that's what we have in App Cloud. So you get, you get that, whole, that whole layer of services that you need on top of just application development hosting. And as well as all other tools, like built-in Cloud ID, uh, we are using Code Envy. You saw Tyler from Code Envy do a keynote uh, yesterday. Uh, have built-in Jenkins and uh, issue tracker and so on. In your on-premise or dedicated deployment, all these points are customizable. So you can say, okay, we don't want your issue tracker, we want Jira that we are using, and you can hook them up, etc. In the cloud, like I said, it's a, it's a shared environment in which things are pre-set up, so you get our standard issue tracker and our standard uh, uh, Jenkins deployment and, and so on. Uh, API Cloud is uh, what mentioned by Sanjiva in his keynote yesterday. That's what we launched in beta a year ago, launched commercially this week at this um, show. Already have paying customers, so that, that was quick and it's a good thing to have. Uh, so it's, it's basically API manager, so one, one of the most popular products that, that we have, uh, API Manager, just run multi-tenant as a service. So you get the whole, like all the major capabilities of API Manager are there. You get the throttling, you get your, um, your subscriber store, all the social features, forums, policies, monitoring, analytics, all of that is in the system, uh, available as a service. So you basically just go there, sign up, and, uh, and start using it. Uh, the real power, however, comes uh, not just from these being point solutions, but from them integrated together. So, for example, actually like one of the first customers who is now a commercial customer of API Cloud, like the reason they picked API Cloud <coughs> is that basically their use case is that they are providing APIs uh, for, for businesses to integrate uh, Salesforce with, uh, which you know, the, the popular CRM system with Zora, which is online billing systems, and, and the additional functionality. 
So for them, it was not enough to just get uh, the backend APIs and expose them as the front end. They actually needed additional, uh, additional data services to be there in the middle because they, they need to keep some data uh, from call to call depending on their customers and, and do the additional computation. So they could not pick something like like APG or Threescale or other solutions which are just API management because they, they, there was no way for them to add the additional computation and data services into the mix without having to do them elsewhere. So the reason why they, want, they went with uh, WSO2 cloud is that in WSO2 uh, you have not just the API piece but the application piece already which includes data services so they could fairly easily add those additional data services and, and code into the mix. Um, so uh, that's how kind of the, the components together give more than just each of them. Right. And there are many other scenarios, like all, all of these are valid scenarios. Like you can use, again, application cloud to host backend for API cloud. Uh, but then the other way around, it also works great because if you use API cloud uh, to access your APIs, then App Cloud uh, knows about that, and you don't have to do all the key management and, and so on. You can just say, okay, this application needs these APIs, and then the application will just do all the OS key management and, and key reissuance and, and so on for you. It becomes much easier. And obviously, once we add additional things like integration and, and uh, IoT scenarios for device cloud, etc., they will all be integrated. So that's the whole idea is for us to gradually add not just point solutions, but really add parts of the platform. So they are all, they're all integrated, they're not isolated. Our goal is not just to compete against the, the point solutions on the market, but gradually give you the full power of the platform. So basically that's, that's the kind of 20 minute overview of everything cloud that we do and, and why we do that. <music> Thank you.